Hey, podcast listeners. While I'm taking some time off this week visiting Sarasota, Florida, I'm bringing you a previous episode that I think you'll enjoy. It's about Roth IRAs. You might be surprised about how incredibly flexible they are compared to other types of retirement accounts and that you can even pull money out of them before retirement. So if you want to learn more about these terrific accounts, keep listening, and I'll be back next week with a new show for you. And if you'd like to see some photos from my Sarasota trip, be sure to follow me on Instagram at Laura D. Adams. Okay, here's the show. What's up, friends, and welcome back to the Money Girl Podcast. My name is Laura Adams. I'm a personal finance expert and author based in Austin, Texas. On this show, my mission is pretty simple. It's to help you master your money so you can live rich and love the journey. That could mean bringing on a guest expert, doing a QA, and a or just diving deep into a specific topic that I think can improve your financial awareness, help you stay motivated to improve your financial health, and ultimately, make the best money decisions possible. Thanks so much for downloading the show and to everyone who submitted five-star reviews and ratings in iTunes. That means a lot to me. I read all of them. As I always tell you, it helps the podcast get visibility so new listeners can find us and join the Money Girl community so we can help more people get the financial information they need. So if you're getting value from the show and you haven't done a review or rating yet, please do it. That's really the best way to give back and let me know that you're enjoying the show. So thanks in advance. This week is a bit of a follow-up to last week's show, where I talked about how to help kids get rich using a Roth IRA. I mentioned several ways that you or your child can spend money in his or her Roth IRA that have nothing to do with retirement. I received several questions about clarifying those benefits for adults, so that's what we'll do today. Owning a Roth IRA and really understanding all the rules is another matter. So in this post, I'll give you more clarity about the unique flexibility of these accounts and four ways you're allowed to make penalty-free withdrawals from a Roth IRA to spend before you retire. As always, the resources that I mentioned will be linked up for you in the notes for this show, which are on the Money Girl section at quickanddirtytips.com. This is podcast number 494 called Four penalty-free ways to use a Roth IRA before retirement. It's brought to you by Policy Genius. Spring is the time of year when seeds grow into flowers, and you grow financially with Policy Genius. Policy Genius is the easy way to buy life insurance online. In just two minutes, you can compare quotes from top insurers to find your best price. Then Policy Genius will do the rest. So next time you stop to smell the roses, Pull out your phone and head to policygenius.com. Policy Genius, spring is here. Kick it off by nipping life insurance in the bud. As I mentioned in podcast number 493, called How to Make Kids Rich by Investing in an IRA, I discussed the eligibility rules and the benefits of using a Roth IRA to give minors a financial head start in life. And if you want to learn more, I really encourage you to go back to that show, even if you don't have kids, because I really went in depth into some of the details about Roth accounts. But basically, a Roth IRA is available to anyone, no matter your age, when you have earned income up to certain annual limits. So there are limits if you make too much money. And again, last week's show went into all the detail there, so I'm not going to rehash it in this show. With a Roth IRA, your contributions are not tax deductible, which means you make them on an after-tax basis. Then your investment earnings grow completely tax-free. That's a huge benefit. Because you pay tax up front on Roth contributions, you're allowed to withdraw them at any time for any reason. That's just a major benefit. You don't owe the IRS additional tax or penalties on that portion of your account. So that means you can take out an amount that equals but that does not exceed the total amount of your original contributions with no problems. However, Where things get a little confusing is for the earnings portion of your Roth account. So the investment growth that your contributions create 
is subject to tax in certain situations. There are restrictions on withdrawals of earnings because you haven't paid tax on that part yet. Also, the IRS says that your earnings must be distributed from a Roth IRA last, so the contributions come first. So how much you want to withdraw and the percentage that would come from earnings determines your potential taxes and liabilities. Let's say you contributed $5,000 to a Roth IRA every year for 10 years, and you've got a current account balance of $56,000. So your total after-tax contributions add up to 50000 so that's 5000 times 10 years, and your pre-tax earnings on those contributions, those total $6,000. So you could withdraw up to $50,000 of those original contributions from the account with no restrictions, no tax liability, no penalties. Easy peasy, right? But whether you could do the same with those $6,000 in Roth IRA earnings depends on three factors. Number one, how long you've held or owned the account. Number two, your age. And number three, how you plan to spend the earnings that you withdraw. So I'm going to cover these three factors in more detail. And by the way, if you're interested in learning just some basics about different types of retirement accounts like the Roth IRA and how it's different from a Roth 401k and traditional accounts, I have a really handy tool that you can download for free. It shows you the pros and cons of different types of retirement accounts. So this one-page reference tool is called the Retirement Account Comparison Chart. You can get it in a few different ways. One is to visit my tools page at lauradadams.com. You can also get it in the notes for this show. Again, it's the Money Girl section at quickanddirtytips.com. Or you can send me a text message. Text the word retire to the number 33444, and I'll send you that PDF resource right away. The reason that Roth IRAs come with some additional rules is because they just offer so many great advantages that the IRS wants to make sure that you don't abuse them. So the hurdle you must get over before you're eligible to withdraw earnings tax-free is called the Roth five-year rule. So the five-year rule is a waiting period that begins on January 1st of the year your first Roth IRA contribution was made for. And I say made for because it could be different than the actual year you contribute money because you have until April 15 to make an IRA contribution for the previous tax year. So again, that waiting period begins on January 1 of the year your first Roth IRA contribution was made for. Even if you never put another dime into a Roth IRA after that initial contribution, the holding period clock starts ticking and you'll satisfy the requirement once five tax years have passed. And making new contributions doesn't reset the clock, so don't worry about that. You can make new contributions with with no downside. Also, if you have multiple Roth IRAs, they're aggregated together under this rule, which means you get credit for the oldest one. So when you satisfy the five-year rule once, it's satisfied for good, assuming you keep the account open. Now, if you don't meet the five-year holding period rule and you withdraw earnings from a Roth IRA, they will be included in your taxable income for the year. Plus, you may be subject to an early withdrawal penalty depending on your age, and I'll cover more about that in just a moment. Age is such a critical factor when it comes to retirement accounts because they're designed to encourage you to invest for the long term. So they're trying to get you to keep the money in the account until your age 59 and a half. Just about all retirement accounts set this official 59 and a half retirement age. And that's the point when you're allowed to begin taking withdrawals. Before that age, taking withdrawal is possible, but it's going to come with a 10% penalty that you've got to pay in addition to regular income tax. So if you're over age 59 and a half, you won't be subject to an early withdrawal penalty for the earnings portion of a Roth IRA. However, if you have not owned the account for five years, you would still have to pay income tax on them. As I previously mentioned, the five-year rule applies no matter your age. And if you're under age 59 and a half and you withdraw earnings from a Roth IRA, 
they will be subject to the 10% early withdrawal penalty unless you qualify for an exemption, which I'll cover more about in a moment. And if you didn't own the account for five years, income tax would also apply. I know this is kind of complicated, but if you guys stick with me, I think you'll get it. And of course, you can always listen to this episode again if you want to review everything that I'm covering. So here's an example. Let's say you opened a Roth IRA in 2010 and you have contributions that total $10,000 and you've got earnings of $1,000. So your account is now worth a total of $11,000 today. If you turned 59 and a half in 2017, you meet the five-year holding rule because you opened the account in 2010, now it's 2017, you've had the account at least five years. And you also meet the age requirement that allows you to make withdrawals of both contributions and earnings with no taxes and no penalties. But let's say you've got that exact same account, but you're not 59 and a half or older, you're 40 and you want to withdraw the full $11,000, which, as I mentioned, includes $1,000 of earnings. In that case, you'd have to pay income tax on $1,000. In addition, you'd be subject to the extra 10% early withdrawal penalty unless you qualify for an exemption. So assuming you satisfy the five-year rule, I'm going to cover four of these exemptions. There are four ways that you can spend Roth IRA earnings penalty-free but not tax-free before retirement. Before we cover them, I want to thank the sponsors who keep Money Girl going. Today's episode is also supported by Wander Beauty, a makeup brand dedicated to helping you look great in no time. Wander Beauty for women on the go. Their products are all travel-friendly, mess-free, and made to fit your busy lifestyle. So you can do your makeup in the car or handle skincare at the gym. Wander Beauty was founded by a working mom and a supermodel, two hardworking women who want to make makeup the easiest part of your day. Their beauty essentials are multitasking and multi-purpose, so you can create a full look without a full makeup bag. And everything is made with skin-loving ingredients from around the world. Wander Beauty is exactly what I need to look my best. The products feel great on my skin, and I love that they're easy to apply anywhere. Their Mile High Club Mascara is the best that I've ever used. I am obsessed with it, and I've tried a lot of different mascara brands. Get maximum impact with minimum effort with Wander Beauty. Get 20% off your purchase at wanderbeauty.com slash money. That's wanderbeauty.com slash money for 20% off. wanderbeauty.com slash money. Support for Money Girl also comes from Capital One. With the Spark Cash Card from Capital One, you earn unlimited 2% cash back on all of your business purchases. Think about it. Unlimited 2% cash back on everything you buy for your business. That cash back can add up to thousands of dollars, and you can use it to reinvest in your business so you can continue growing. Take it from Ken Jacobus, owner of Good Start Packaging, a business that sells compostable food service packaging to restaurants. Ken wanted his children to know that he valued the earth and had the courage to act on those values. So in 2009, he started Good Start Packaging and began creating certified compost food service packaging accessible to restaurants everywhere. And with the Spark Cash Card from Capital One, he earned $36,000 in cash back, which he used to offer health care to his employees. Imagine what unlimited 2% cash back could do for your business. Capital One, what's in your wallet? Okay, let's cover the four ways you can spend Roth IRA earnings penalty-free before retirement. The first one is for higher education expenses. So if you plan to pay for college, that's one of the best reasons to have a Roth IRA. The tax-free growth is similar to what you get with a 529 plan, which is a dedicated college savings account. And if you want to learn more about 529s, I did a podcast called IRA or 529 plan, which is better for college savings. That's episode number 451. So depending on the 529 plan you choose, 
The tax benefits could be even better than a Roth IRA because some states offer residents additional incentives. So you got to do your homework and compare the options when paying for college is one of your financial goals. But unlike a 529 plan, if you don't end up needing some or all of the money for college, you can simply leave it in a Roth IRA and use it for another reason later on or for retirement. Allowable qualified expenses include tuition, fees, books, supplies, and equipment, including computers, that are required to attend an eligible institution. Plus, if the student attends at least half-time, room and board qualifies as well. The funds can be used at just about all accredited private or public schools, like colleges, universities, and vocational schools, but they have to participate in student aid programs administered by the U.S. Department of Education. And if you're not sure whether a school qualifies, just call them up. The registrar should know. The second way to use your Roth IRA earnings, penalty-free, is to buy your first home. So if you plan to buy, build, or even rebuild a first home, you can spend up to $10,000 penalty-free from a Roth IRA. Or a couple who each has a Roth could withdraw a total of $20,000. This is a lifetime limit, so you can only claim this exemption once. The IRS definition of a first-time homeowner is also interesting. It's kind of broad. It says that even if you've owned a home before, you're actually considered a first-timer if neither you nor a spouse, if you're married, have owned a primary residence within the last two years. However, if you're married, your spouse must also be considered a first-timer and not have owned a property within the past two years or owned a main residence within the past two years. You can use this exemption to pay costs associated with buying a primary home for yourself, for your spouse, for either of your children, either of your grandchildren, or either of your parents or grandparents. As always, your contributions to a Roth IRA, remember there are two different things, there's contributions and then there are earnings. The contributions to a Roth IRA are available to you at any time, for any reason, for any purpose. So if you have the savings set aside, you could tap that portion of your account for a larger down payment that's both tax and penalty free. The third exemption is for medical expenses. So let's say you've got a lot of medical bills. If you plan to use a Roth IRA withdrawal to pay for medical expenses for yourself, your spouse, or your dependents, a certain amount is exempt. You can avoid a Roth IRA penalty on earnings to pay medical costs when they exceed 10% of your adjusted gross income. If you have not been reimbursed for them by a health insurer, a company, or an individual. So again, if you have these expenses, but they're not covered by insurance and you don't expect to get any money for them, as long as they exceed 10% of your adjusted gross income, you could tap your Roth IRA for them penalty-free. And the fourth way you can avoid paying a penalty on Roth IRA withdrawals of earnings is health insurance, but only during a period of unemployment. So the person who's out of work could be you, your spouse, or your dependents. These four types of expenses that I've covered, education, buying your first home, medical expenses, and health insurance are not the only ways to avoid paying the early withdrawal penalty on Roth IRA earnings. So if you're interested in learning more, be sure to check out IRS publication 590B called Distributions from Individual Retirement Arrangements for more information. And of course, I'll have a link to that in the notes for the show. You know you should be saving for retirement, right? There comes a time when every one of us will need to stop working, either due to physical or mental limitations, or when we choose to transition to a lower-paying career or just to quit altogether. But even if you have no idea how or when you'll spend the money that you squirrel away in a retirement account, the beauty of putting it into a Roth IRA is that it's not completely locked away. There's so much flexibility and great tax breaks that there's very little downside to using these great accounts. So I hope this episode has given you more clarity about some of the most common ways that you can use a Roth IRA. 
Keep your questions coming. I always say this show is about you. So I want to know what questions and financial challenges you're facing. A great way to tap into the Money Girl community is to join my private Facebook group called Dominate Your Dollars. It's a thriving community of thousands of people who are committed to taking their financial game to the next level. The group is a great place just to chat about simple questions or maybe to present a big financial dilemma that you may be facing. I'm in the group at least once a week, so I hope to see you there. To request your invitation, it's easy. Just visit Dominate Your Dollars on Facebook or send me a text message for immediate access. Text the word DOLLARS to the number 33444. I'll see you there. You can also reach me directly through my contact page at lauradadams.com. That's all for now. I'll talk to you next week, courtesy of Money Girl, your guide to a richer life. 